Hello everyone. This video is a follow-up to one I made a while ago testing the accuracy of the scale trick. I'll put a link to that video in the end card in case you haven't seen it. There were a ton of great comments about things I should have tested or considered in that video, as well as a few other similar techniques that I'd like to test out and compare it to the first test. So get ready, hit that subscribe button like it's the emergency stop, and let's get into it. The first comment I'd like to address came from Dan Roswood, and he was asking about downward pressure onto the scale from the quill. His question was, how do you determine how much down pressure to use? I would think if it's not enough, the scale will slip out. If it's too much, you'll end up damaging your cutter. This is actually why I've never tried this trick. I'm worried I'm going to damage my cutter. Thanks for the video, as always, I appreciate it. Well, thank you for your question, Dan. I just used a really light downward pressure on the quill, just enough to hold the scale there. You have quite a bit of feel through the quill handle, and I only pressed down until I felt a little bit of resistance. You want a really light touch here because as you move toward the center, the tool will need to be free enough that it can be pushed upward by the curvature of the stock. This isn't enough pressure to damage a high-speed steel cutter, but carbide could definitely chip, which is why I said in that video to never use this trick with carbide. Several people brought up their desire to see multiple edge findings to check if there was any variance. That could easily be its own video, but I'll attempt to do it justice here. I ended up doing this in two different ways. Initially, I found the center once and zeroed my DRO. Then I found the sides of the bar again, jotted down the DRO readings, and notated the deviation between them. The problem was, that test didn't really tell me how much I was deviating from my original zero, so I went ahead and retested it. I established my zero the exact same way as I did before, and then I used the tool offsets on my digital readout, starting with offset number one, and I found zero the exact same way. Now I can just flip through them and see exactly how far off I was each time. Never more than two ten thousandths of an inch. You can also test this just by finding one edge over and over and over to see how repeatable you are. This is a great way to practice and build up the sense of feel you need when finding edges. Sense of feel is incredibly important because over-traveling with the edge finder looks identical to when it just kicks over, at least until the spring breaks and your edge finder's tip goes flying off into the ether. You need to approach slowly and steadily and be prepared to stop immediately. Don't forget to breathe and occasionally blink though. Anyway, the question was about finding the center over and over, not just one edge. I'll put the numbers up on the screen showing the results from both of my tests. I highly recommend you try this yourselves because your sense of feel is what matters to you, not mine. This is something we all need to develop for ourselves. Another really common comment was about the tip of the tool possibly skewing the results. In the test, I used a center drill with a 118 degree chisel point. The concerns were that the angle of the chisel point could affect the scale. If the tip went along the length of the scale, it might cause the scale to appear flatter than it actually was. Having the tip 90 degrees to the length theoretically would be the most accurate. Then having it at random angles might cause varying degrees of error. I tested this 10 times each with the chisel point parallel and perpendicular to the scale, as well as a few random angles to see if it made any difference. Much to my surprise, having the point running parallel to the scale was actually the most consistent orientation. That is to say that every attempt landed in pretty much the same range instead of being all over the place. Therefore, I used that orientation for all subsequent tests. Having the tip perpendicular to the scale actually averaged out to be quote unquote the most accurate, but averages can be very deceiving. The individual results were incredibly inconsistent, and the scale would wildly pivot on the chisel point, which made it seem floppy and unresponsive. I think it's really just coincidental that the 10 attempts I made were balanced out to be equally crappy in both directions. The same could be said for random angle number one, which averaged out to be quote unquote more accurate than parallel, and I'm saying that with the biggest air quotes on earth, because the individual results were pretty horrendous. With the random angles, the scale had a tendency to twist and line itself up with the tip, 
which made judging when to stop quite difficult due to the constantly shifting perspective on the scale. Pest789 and Darren Radcliffe both asked if the errors were biased to one direction or the other. This is something that actually occurred to me as well when I was editing the first video and typing in all the values. I didn't actually pay attention to negative or positive coordinates and whether it was evenly split or leaning one way or the other. I got a lot of data on this one since I paid attention to it in every single one of my tests. I made sure to do an equal amount of tests from both the side nearest and farthest from me. The results were heavily skewed to the starting side. In fact, when approaching from the far side, which is on the right side of your screen, every single test was biased toward that side, 100% of them. Meanwhile, approaches from the near side were consistently and considerably more accurate. Out of 75 scale tests from the near side, which was the negative side on my DRO, it only skewed positive 13 times, and 10 of those happened when I tested larger diameters. More on that one later. I don't have space on the screen to put all the bias results since I did a total of 150 tests, so I'll just post the averages here. One thing is definitely obvious though. If you're going to use the scale trick, approach from the side closest to you. If you're interested, I have a PDF of all the test results posted in the video description. There were a lot of comments that brought up the background as a source of inaccuracy, especially my Starrett tap drill chart back there. A commenter named Richard had a suggestion. He said, I usually put a set of gauge blocks as a background. This ensures your eyes have to use the vice jaw tops as reference and not a distant background. That's a real nice tip you have there, Dick. It makes sense that putting a plain background behind the scale might help limit potential distractions, but I tested that several times with my original 3 quarter inch stock, as well as several smaller and larger diameters, and the results really didn't show much, if any, improvement at all. In fact, the average of the near side was significantly worse when testing on the 3 quarter inch rod. Granted, the number of tests was small compared to the amount of data I have on the bias, I will say that everything was much easier to see, and I preferred it even if it didn't make much difference. Similar to that last tip, a couple of folks said I should be looking at a reference point closer to the end of the scale, rather than what I said in the video, which was just looking at the vice jaws, which are too close to the center. That way the error is going to be more apparent. That makes total sense to me, and I've been doing that in all of the tests so far. A really great idea came in from Rick Palachuk, who said, A background sight scale would help. It can be as simple as a block with some graduations scribed into it. Thanks for sharing. Cheers. Well, I made up a set of those blocks and tested them ten times each from the near and the far sides. The results from both sides showed a noticeable improvement over the other tests, and they were very consistent across the board. No wild swings whatsoever. The near side still tested better overall, but it was much closer this time. It was also easier to see the scale and took less time to line it up. I think this is a really worthwhile tool to make. I've posted a video showing the blocks being made, and I'll put a link to that at the end of the video. Lots of comments brought up the diameter of the stock and its effect on the results. As the diameter of the stock grows, there's less and less of a difference when you move away from the center of the part, so the scale will look flat farther away from the center than it would on smaller stock. The results show this very clearly. I tested this out 10 times each with both smaller and larger diameters to see how big a difference it made, and accuracy was slightly better on the diameters that were smaller than the 3 quarter inch stock I used in all the other tests. At 1 inch in diameter, the results were very similar to the 3 quarter inch bar, but when I tested inch and 5 eighths and 2 and 3 sixteenths in diameter, the results were horribly inconsistent, especially from the far side of the part. I had some tests that were okay, maybe even borderline acceptable, but those were overshadowed by the ones around it that were so far off they may as well have been in another country. As mentioned earlier, I also heavily skewed to the far side of the part, even when starting from the near side. Karen O'Brien commented, Great video. I'd be interested to see how close you'd get by eye alone, without the scale I mean. Well, Karen, it seems like you just want me to embarrass myself, but what the hell. 
A little humiliation is good for the soul, right? I tested this 10 times from each side. I put the cutter as close to the end of the stock as possible to better my chances of success, although it really didn't help. I was all over the place with these tests, and my bias numbers went so far out the window I didn't even include them in that data set. I feel that's justifiable though because I wasn't testing with the scale. Between this clip and the ones testing larger diameters, I have more than enough footage for another Patreon-only video of me cursing like a sailor, so if you're interested in that, the link to my Patreon page is down in the description. So what have we learned from all this pain and misery I put myself through? First of all, approaching from the near side of the part is unquestionably better. I also think the graduated blocks are the bee's knees and well worth the effort of making them. They've earned a place of honor in my toolbox. The biggest shock of all was the tip angle. I really expected it to be most accurate with the tip perpendicular to the scale, but in reality that orientation was almost unusable. The scale just rocked back and forth on the point of the tool, and because of that it always tipped toward the heavier side. Even though it was exhausting to do all that testing, I had a lot of fun figuring out how I was going to do it. So thanks to all of you for asking great questions and leaving thought-provoking suggestions. I really learned a lot. As promised, on the left, I have a link to my first scale trick video. And on the right, I have a link to the video where I make the graduated background blocks. If you have any questions or topics you'd like to see me cover, let me know down in the comments. Hit the like and subscribe button while you're down there, and check out my Patreon page if you'd like to help support the channel. Thanks for watching.